Hello friends, welcome to TechCube Gate classes. My name is Professor Vivek Singh Rathor and I am Assistant Professor in Government Engineering College, Bilaspur, Chhattisgarh. And uh, uh, in this video lecture series, I am dealing with signals and system subject in which today we are about to start module number 6. Uh, till now we have completed module number uh, till module 5 in which I have dealt with uh, classification of signals and system, LTI system, Fourier series for periodic signals, Fourier transform and then we have uh, seen uh, Laplace transform and now we are about to see uh, Z transform which is a similar to Laplace transform but for discrete time signals. So uh, we will start the session. If you have uh, seen all the videos till now and uh, if you have liked the video, if you are gaining some knowledge from this these videos, please uh, hit the like button, uh, share it with the ne uh, needy students because this initiative we have taken uh, for uh, the benefits of the student community. So uh, share it as, soon, uh, as far as possible so that uh, it may reach to the needy students also. So okay, let's start our session with our Z transform. We'll see that uh, Z transform is a uh, uh, bit similar to uh, the Laplace transform. Just we'll see the for the discrete time domain. Okay, discrete time signal only. We'll see. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, when we were we have started our Laplace transform, we have seen that uh, what was the reason uh, to go for uh, this uh, more generalized transform when we were having the Fourier transform because see. We have seen till now CTFT that is Fourier transform for continuous time signal and uh, that was similar to uh, 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 for discrete time signal also. I will tell you see uh, Fourier transform so I will tell you uh, I will relate your uh, Fourier transform with this uh, Z transform. So see Fourier transform was there for continuous time for continuous time we were having f of omega is equal to minus infinite to infinite f of t e to the power minus j omega t dt. This uh, mathematical expression was for calculating the for trans, uh, calculating the Fourier transform for a signal f of t by this mathematical expression. If we are having a discrete time signal and we need to calculate Fourier transform, so what will happen? what will happen if it will it will come like this uh, okay uh, wait uh, we'll write f of omega and now we'll see see for discrete time signal we'll replace uh, integration by summation so summation will be there n is equal to minus infinite to infinite here t was minus infinite to infinite uh, f of n will be there because our signal is in discrete time domain and e to the power minus j omega for t it will be n Okay, and this will be the summation. So, uh, Fourier transform for discrete time signal is this, and this is called as uh, this is CTFT, and this is called as GTFT. We will study GTFT more detail in the next module, but uh, uh, as of now, you can understand this. So, from uh, continuous Fourier transform or discrete time Fourier transform, the main problem was that if at all, if at all, our f of t, f of t or uh, you say minus f of t infinite to infinite minus f of t it is equal minus j omega t dt or uh, is less uh, is uh, not uh, less than infinite means uh, uh, this is the existence condition for Fourier transform if you remember existence condition for Fourier transform is f of t to the minus j omega t mod value should be less than infinite if it is uh, there then only and uh, you can go for Schwartz inequality and you can uh, hold this value also that uh, minus infinite to infinite mod of f of t dt should be less than infinite value. So ultimately what was the conclusion for these all things was that if your f of t is not absolutely integrable then your Fourier transform cannot be evaluated. We have seen in many type of signals uh, we have seen that <coughs> Some signals like uh, some signals like e to the power minus a t u t uh, e to the power e to the power minus a t u t like this type of signal uh, this type of signal uh, Fourier transform was easily calculated because this signal is uh, value is tending to zero when t tending to infinite but uh, this type of signal u of t uh, value was not absolutely integrable. 
so we have uh, taken the fourier transform by some other technique uh, that is why this is this uh, this signals are called as limitedly defined fourier transform but this type of signals but this type of signals were uh, fourier transform was not at all uh, means uh, this signal is not at all absolutely integrable so this signal fourier transform was not defined this is limitedly defined and this is truly defined so uh, what we saw was that uh, that uh, like this type of signal uh, if we will multiply with a exponentially decaying signal then for some value of signal like c when this type of signal is there when this type of signal is there when it is multiplied by this type of signal uh, then somewhere you can say that this value this value is uh, not at all increasing but it will decrease somewhere it will decrease somewhere like see like this value will go on like this okay so see uh, okay so what will happen what will happen that uh, that see uh, whenever a signal is not at all uh, absolutely integrable then we will multiply we will multiply a signal with like e to the power a t u of t is there okay e to the power a t u t you know this signal is there it, it is not absolutely integrable so we will multiply with a uh, exponential decaying, decaying signal so that it will cause like e to the power minus a minus sigma t will happen and for some value of sigma like for for some value of sigma maybe uh, sigma is uh, let's suppose uh, a minus sigma a minus sigma is less than 0 a minus sigma so a is uh, less than sigma so sigma when sigma is greater than a or we can write as sigma is greater than a for sigma is greater than a value hai na, this signal will be decaying and then we can calculate Fourier transform so um, moreover for generalized uh, we can uh, keep this value as a ROC for uh, ROC region of convergence and this all process is called as Laplace transform for which uh, only sigma is equal to zero value can be called as Fourier transform so my main aim uh, about uh, for division for uh, this revision was that that you can understand how z transform also came so see now you understood that how from continuous Fourier tr transform uh, for some signals we were multiplying this type of uh, X, uh, decaying signal and we are seeing that for which value of sigma it is absolutely integrable or uh, we can take out the region of convergence so okay we got now uh, what for discrete time signal what is there for discrete time signal so we will see see uh, as of now you are having f of omega is equal to uh, summation of n is equal to minus infinite to infinite f of n is there e to the power minus j omega n is there this is the formula for calculating discrete time Fourier transform dtft okay so see uh, maybe this f of n is not absolutely integrable then what you do then you cannot calculate discrete time Fourier transform then what we will do we will multiply a uh, decaying signal so let's multiply with this f of n e to the power minus sigma n and then e to the power minus j omega n okay now see earlier what we were doing we were calculating uh, Fourier transform for this type of uh, this signal now we are taking Fourier transform for this signal now our signal has been changed our signal has been changed to fn into fn into e to the power minus sigma n now this is our main signal so um, of obviously f of n is multiplied by e to the minus sigma n so for some value of sigma this value will be decaying and then we can take Fourier transform so uh, see now we can uh, uh, simplify it like see uh, we will write here n is equal to minus infinite to infinite is there f of n will be there e to the power minus sigma n e to the power minus sigma we can take as here n and here also e to the power uh, uh, e to the power j omega can be written and here minus n will be there here also we will take minus only will not take plus so that it, uh, common can be taken and now we can put as n is equal to minus infinite to infinite f of n will be there e to the power sigma can be taken e to the power sigma can be written as uh, let write let's write 
uh, let uh, e to the power sigma is equal to r is equal to e to the power sigma. So we'll write here, we'll write here uh, r minus n e to the power j omega minus n. So it can be written as n is equal to minus infinite to infinite f of n will be there r e to the power j omega to the power minus n can be written and let uh, z, z is equal to r e to the power j omega. So here like uh, in uh, Laplace transform we have taken s as a complex variable for uh, where in the Laplace transform uh, I will write here okay. Laplace transform s is equal to sigma plus j omega we have considered earlier if you have remembered. Here we will take z is equal to r into e to the power j omega. So, okay, so z is equal to r e to the power j omega. There, uh, okay. So, see, we can write here, we can write here as summation of n is equal to minus infinite to infinite. f of n will be there, z minus n will be there. This is the expression, and now we can write as. Here when we were taking f of omega, so we are taking minus j omega and here we can take o, o f of z, okay, f of z, uh, z can be written because here z variables are there. So this is the final expression for calculating z transform, this is the final, where uh, z is equal to, where z is equal to r e to the power j omega, where we can say that magnitude of z will be equal to r and phase of z will be equal to omega, you know? phase of z will be equal to omega. So this is the final expression for our z transform by this expression only your z transform can, uh, will be calculated. If you need f of z, z transform like there, uh, there uh, see I will write here uh, again and again f of t Laplace transform will be equal to f of s. f of n okay same only discrete time so z transform will be equal to f of uh, z okay this is the thing which is uh, the concept you should clear okay uh, again one more conclusion i will tell you see uh, when f of t okay when f of uh, t was there if we are uh, uh, changing it to frequency domain if we want to analyze in frequency domain we will get f of omega this is called as uh, CTFT continuous time Fourier transform yeah. uh, from time domain we are uh, taking it to frequency domain this is only there okay now see uh, for see when uh, for f of t e to the power minus sigma t for this value if we will take continuous Fourier transform we will get f of s okay f of s where f s is equal to sigma plus j omega uh, what uh, if you have uh, seen the, if you have understood the in the last module you can understand that when we are taking Fourier transform only we are taking Fourier transform only but our signal is f of t into e to the power minus sigma t and if we are taking this Fourier transform then what we are getting final value is f of s like same as f of uh, n will be there and if we are taking dt ft so what we are getting f of omega only okay f of omega only we are getting and uh, if we are uh, doing f of n into e to the power minus uh, e to the power minus sigma n e to the power minus sigma n just like this i will write here clearly uh, for your understanding uh, e to the power minus sigma n and now we will take discrete time fourier transform what we will get we will get f of z f of z okay f of z so ultimately what we are doing uh, z transform is nothing but uh, Fourier transform of f n into e power minus sigma n. Matlab, uh, in Hindi if you understand that agar f of n ka sirf aap uh, sida, uh, kya bolte hai, f of n ka Fourier transform of lete hain to aapko f of omega milta hai. Lekin f of n ko jab multiply kar dete hain e, of, e to the power minus sigma n se aur Fourier transform lete hain to aapko f of z milta hai. Ye cheez ko abbas yaad rakhega, ye cheez to concept hai samajhne ka. So this is the concept which you need to understand. I think you have understood this concept very well. So see, now if you have seen, z transform is a bit similar, uh, almost similar to your uh, Laplace transform. Just uh, t is replaced by n and some values are uh, replaced like there. 
S is equal to sigma plus J omega was there. Okay, sigma plus J omega here Z is equal to R e to the power J omega is there. Okay, there if you see uh, real part of S will be there. Real part of S will be equal to sigma, where this is only uh, used for ROC value, है ना? Region of convergence. Here mod Z will be there, which is equal to R, and this value will be uh, responsible for ROC value. This will be only for phase. Okay. So uh, here ROC was formed in rectangular strip. If you see, it is it was formed on rectangular strip, and here ROC. ROC will be formed on circular strip. Okay, circular uh, circular strip, or we can say annular strip, annular annular strip. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, uh, some changes in that. Okay, and uh, what was the existence condition for Laplace transform? Existence condition for Laplace transform was f minus infinite to infinite f t into e to the power minus sigma t. Okay, this value this value Should be less than infinite, है ना? This value should be less than infinite, and here uh, condition for uh, existence for Z transform will be summation of n is equal to minus infinite to infinite. F n was there, F n is there. R to the power minus n, okay? R to the power minus n. This uh, summation value mod should be less than infinite. This is the existence condition for Z transform. This condition, so we have already seen in the Laplace transform, but this condition. Is a uh, condition for existence, existence for Z transform. Okay, Z. It means that uh, for for calculating Z transform of any signal f of n, any discrete time signal, f of n into r to the power minus n mod value summation value should be less than infinite. Then only you can calculate its Z transform. So from this conclusion, what you will get? For some value of r, like here, for some value of sigma, this value will be absolutely integrable. So that value of sigma is only called as ROC. Here also, for some value of r, see n is uh, going from minus infinite to infinite. But uh, r f of n is okay. Your signal is there, but f of n may be absolutely integrable, not integrable. We don't know, but Some value of r, uh, this all total portion will be absolutely integrable for some value of r. That value of r is only called as region of convergence. The region of convergence. So region of convergence r o c will be represented by the value of r, the value of r, or you can say, or you can say mod of z. Okay, here r o c. Was represented by represented by sigma or real part of real part of S, है ना? For because see for those value of sigma only this value will be dependent ना. Here for those value of R only this value is dependent that it is absolutely integrable or not. So this clear cut concept you should understand why we are going from a discrete time Fourier transform DTFT was there. to more generalized transform z transform is there so this concept you should understand okay now we'll see uh, z transform for some uh, standard signal then only you will understand how we can we are we are able to calculate so we'll try for some standard signal like that of delta of n delta of n is a uh, impulse signal it is a impulse signal is there okay impulse signal okay fine so see uh, first of all you need to check that uh, whether z transform can be calculated for this signal or not so first of all first step uh, should be ours that condition for existence hai na condition for existence we need to check so we'll see summation of n is equal to minus infinite to infinite value f of n is nothing but delta of n R of minus n will be there. This value mod value should be less than minus infinite, है ना? So uh, is it possible? So delta, any signal multiplied by delta of n, so n is equal to here we will take zero value. So we will give one value. So total summation of delta n value will be one. So one is absolutely 
less than infinite therefore therefore uh, z transform therefore z transform can be calculated can be calculated now uh, agar aapka uh, condition is satisfied so uh, what is the formula for calculating z transform hai na z transform will be calculated like um, summation of n is equal to minus infinite to infinite f of n is there f of n is nothing but delta of n is there z to the power minus n okay uh, this is there so ultimately uh, value will come here one only so ultimately your f of z will be equal to 1 so uh, delta of n z transform z transform will be equal to 1 this is your answer for uh delta of n hai na very easy how we have done first step was condition for checking condition for existence second step is uh, directly if it is okay then you can directly put the value okay okay we will see one more question then you will understand uh let's suppose uh, u of t is there in time domain you will see u of n will be there in the frequency domain uh, not uh, in the discrete time domain okay so u of n first uh, f of n will be equal to u of n calculate calculate z transform so first of all what we will see is it z transform uh, is possible or not so condition for existence will see condition for existence is minus infinite to infinite u of n r of minus n mod value should be less than infinite this is the condition so condition is uh, uh, we'll keep un is there so n is equal to 0 to infinite value r of minus n so this value can be written as uh, n is equal to 0 so we'll write as 1 plus r to the power minus 1 plus r to the power minus 2 plus r to the power minus 3 so okay this value maybe if if r is equal to r is uh, greater than 1 r is equal to 0 or r is uh, let's suppose uh, we'll keep r is not r is uh, r is greater than less than 1 okay we'll keep r is equal to 1 let's suppose if r is greater than 1 then obviously this series will be decaying signal decaying ha huh? 1 1 2 to the power minus 1 3 to the power minus 2 like this means uh, uh, any value will be there it will be decaying only so for r is greater than 1 this uh, uh signal overall will be absolutely integrable its value will be less than infinite very good for r is equal to 1 so 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus it will go on so it is not absolutely integrable because it will go till infinite so it is not possible r is less than 1 if it will keep less than 1 okay so 1 by 2 let's uh, let's suppose r is equal to 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 to the power minus 1 so 2 to the power 1 so it will go on increasing it will be exponentially increasing signal so this is also not absolutely integrable so for only r is greater than 1 this uh, u of n hai na u of n uh, z transform can be calculated so for roc will be region of convergence will be r is greater than 1 or we can write as mod of z is greater than 1 this is the value where your signal will be region of convergence will be there okay so for this value only we can take z transform so let's take z transform uh, z transform formula is n is equal to minus infinite to infinite and a u of n can be taken and uh, your signal uh, uh, not e uh, z to the power 1 minute uh, we'll write z to the power minus n will be taken this is uh, z transform so we can write here like uh, uh, n is equal to 0 so infinite hai na z to the power minus n will be there and you can also write here as uh, z to the power 0 that is equal to 1 so 1 will write 1 okay 1 plus z to the power minus 1 plus z to the power minus 2 plus so on it will go it is a gp series so what will do a uh, for calculating it a by 1 minus a, a is the first term so 1 by uh, sorry uh, okay uh, here actually first term by 1 minus a is the common difference actually so first term is 1 and 1 minus z inverse will be there uh, uh, if you can divide uh, z inverse by 1 uh, and second term by first term you will get common difference this is the uh, expression what you get in uh, u of n 
so this is f of z will be there uh, i can tell you that u of n z, z transform will be equal to 1 by 1 minus z inverse this is very important because uh, these are standard signals na so this z transform uh, laplace transform will uh, be used in many question you have seen in the laplace transform also so very important conclusion we got that u of n z transform is 1 by 1 minus z inverse with 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 roc z is is greater than 1 and you know, this condition we have seen this condition how we have seen by this formula so uh, now i think you you must be getting that how we are calculating the z transform uh, how we are seeing the existence condition of fourier tra uh, z transform so see one more question i will take uh, then you will uh, uh, more understand uh, let's suppose your f of n will be f of n will be uh, let's suppose u of minus n minus 1 will be there okay see uh, u of t is like this type of signal u of minus t will be equal to uh, like this type of signal like same u of n will be equal to uh, okay this type of signal will be there okay this type of signal will be there and uh, u of minus n minus 1 will be there uh, this type of signal will be there why we are not taking u of minus n because if only if you take u of n and u of minus n then you need to consider from zero but already in u of n zero value is considered so uh, if you are taking a reversal value uh, we need to uh, see u of minus n minus 1 so it will start from here so the opposite signal u uh, discrete time signal of u of minus t is nothing but u of minus n minus 1 so if you want to calculate z transform for this type of signal first of all uh, existence condition you need to check that are we able to calculate its z transform so see and if see uh, in objective type of question if you see the options like uh, z transform is possible or not then do check the existence condition because if it is an option then it may be the answer you know so existence condition will be checked uh, first of all n is equal to minus infinite to infinite u of minus n minus 1 will be there r to the power minus n should be less than if, uh, infinite so uh, means like this value should be infinite so we will take n is equal to minus infinite to minus 1 value r to the power minus n and this uh, value will be seen uh, this value should be equal uh, less than infinite infinite so uh, here we'll say uh, r to the power 1 will be there okay means i am see i i must take from minus infinite to plus 1 uh, minus 1 but i am uh, going on reverse order because uh, from minus infinite it will coming it is so long uh, i'll take uh, uh see minus 1 so minus 2 minus 3 will also come so r to the power minus 2 so 2 will come like this it will go on uh, plus it will go on and r to the power infinite also value will happen acha okay if if at all if at all r is less than less than one value then only this value will be uh decaying and it will be absolutely integrable otherwise if r is equal to 1 r is greater than 1 it is not uh, equal so uh, this value only if r is less than 1 then only uh, this value n is equal to minus infinite to minus 1 r to the power minus n will be less than infinite okay so this is our roc region of convergence so for this value only we can take z, uh, z transform for this type of signal and how we'll take z transform see z transform for a signal we can calculate like uh, summation of n is equal to minus infinite to infinite f of n will be there f of n is nothing but u of minus n minus 1 will be there and z to the power minus n and here we can write n is equal to minus infinite to minus 1 and z to the power minus n which can be written as z uh, to the power 1 plus z square plus z cube plus so on z to the power infinite value will be there so uh, this value can be written as uh, first term will be z 1 minus z will be there okay and uh, for the uh, roc which value z mod z is less than 1 whenever mod z is less than 1 or r is less than 1 then only we can take its fourier transform this is f of z so ultimately what i wanted to tell you is u of minus n minus 
u of minus n minus 1 will be equal to z 1 minus z value okay z, uh, uh, I'll tell you like this z transform will be z 1 minus z when mod z is less than 1 this is ROC condition this is satisfied okay if you have understood this value now if I'll ask you one more question that calculate <coughs> calculate z transform for f of n is equal to minus u of minus n minus 1 then how you do it's the same method the same method will apply uh, just u of minus n minus 1 is there so just uh, you can tell f of z will be equal to f of z will be equal to minus z 1 minus z will be there okay and mod z will be less than 1 only because only we have done negative sign only now we'll understand that see uh, now you have seen that what will be the region of convergence value but how we will plot in s plane we were having rectangular strip and here we are having circular strip so how this rectangular strip has been converted to circular strip we'll see see uh, in s plane we were having sigma plus j omega okay i am dealing with z plane uh, how will represent z plane so uh, uh, in s plane we were having s equal to sigma plus j omega so here we can uh, we, ha we can represent sigma with the real value uh, in the x axis and uh, j omega in the y axis so the value is in the rectangular strip form now uh, for z plane z is equal to r e to the power sigma uh, r e to the power sigma oh sorry r e to the power uh, j omega okay r e to the power j omega r is equal to e to the power sigma okay so here z value is there okay fine so we'll see for z is equal to uh, for sigma is equal to 0 for sigma is equal to 0 we were having s is equal to j omega s is equal to j omega means s is equal to j omega means this 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 line s is equal to j omega sigma is equal to zero line is this one okay and uh, for z plane what will happen z is equal to z is equal to uh, r uh, r is nothing but r is nothing but e to the power sigma so sigma is equal to zero so r is equal to one right? so r is equal to one so e to the power j omega will be there and uh, r is equal to one will be there so see uh, and uh, you, you can say that um, uh, mo r is equal to 1 means mod of z is equal to 1 means magnitude will be 1 and phase will be equal to omega so ultimately z can be written as z can be written as z is equal to uh, 1 angle omega this you can write okay so it can be written uh, it can be plot as uh, see uh, r is equal to 1 means this circle is of uh, radius 1 so radius 1 will be there r r is equal to, it is center so r is equal to 1 will be there okay and now uh, uh, the face is 1 will be same and omega will be there so this will be like this uh, the okay so this is r is equal to 1 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 means the strip will be uh, circular strip for this value will be r is equal to 1 so ultimately ultimately uh, in s plane in s plane okay uh, j omega axis j omega axis is equivalent to z plane z plane uh, r is equal to 1 circle okay this is one transformation this is very important now because you know for stability we need to consider j omega axis so here also r is equal to one circle we will need to consider next we'll see let's suppose sigma is equal to let's suppose sigma is equal to minus one will be there minus one will be okay or uh, we'll see okay sigma is equal to minus one so s will be equal to uh, sigma plus j omega will be there sigma plus j omega will be there so minus 1 plus j omega will be there so the plot can be minus 1 uh, this value is there so your ROC sigma is uh, equal to 1 means ROC will be there maybe left hand side maybe right hand side upon seeing the signal value so like this value is there uh, okay for z value z is equal to 
uh, r e to the power j omega will be there and uh, r is nothing but r is nothing but e to the power sigma so e to the power minus 1 will be there and e to the power minus 1 value will be equal to uh, uh, 1 by e 1 by e value okay so the circle uh, radius will be 1 by e portion and uh, face will be uh, face will be uh, almost omega only so whatever omega value will be there so it can be represented as in the right, uh, left hand side i will draw uh, this value this r is equal to 1 by e value and it will go on it will go on into so ultimately what we can say that um, for s real part of s real part of s is equal to minus 1 will represent will represent will represent r or mod of z r or or mod of z equal to 1 by e 1 by e okay so ultimately what will happen uh, uh, this value is there so uh, actually r is equal to 1 is uh, i will uh, made with green color r is equal to 1 uh, r is equal to 1 this is r is equal to 1 circle and now it is in the innermost part of this so now you can understand the conclusion what i was wanted to tell you that if uh, if your uh, roc if your roc is in the j omega axis uh, left hand side or right hand side whatever it may be but it is in the j omega axis then uh, means j omega axis in the s plane is j omega axis in the s plane is same as r is equal to one circle in the z plane hai na? Um, in our most i say uh, left hand side left hand side of s plane left hand, left hand side of s plane is equivalent to uh, inner circle uh, inner circle inner circle of radius of radius r is equal to less than 1 in z plane this only value you should understand from z plane uh, that in Hindi, agar hamara j omega axis s plane ka aapka r is equal to 1 unit circle jisko hum bolte hai r is equal to 1 circle or unit circle it is a unit circle okay and uh, agar hamara uh, kya bolte hai sigma ki value left hand side of s plane mein aara hai to wo equivalent hai z plane mein inner circle matlab r is equal to 1 agar unit circle hai uske andar wo banega hai na same as if you will plot uh, let suppose let sigma is equal to plus 1 okay sigma is equal to plus 1 so up kya hoga s plane mein s plane mein hoga sigma plus j omega is equal to 1 plus j omega ki value ho jayegi iska matlab hai iska uh, s plane will be in the right hand side s is equal to 1 uh, sigma is equal to 1 yaha se ab yaha se from here roc can be right hand side roc can be left hand side whatever it may be based on your signal uh, your pole value okay no no problem uh, mm, your signal value it is uh, right hand side or left hand side okay now for z is equal to r e to the power j omega will be there r value will be equal to r value or you can say mod of z value will be equal to uh, uh, e to the r is equal to e to the power sigma value is there e to the power 1 value is equal to e and e e is nothing but e is nothing but 2.7 values there so it is greater than 1 so we can plot here uh, this value this value r is equal to nothing but 2.7 or e value and this value will be uh, i'm uh, uh, my circle is not exactly but you understand that it is a circle only and here r is equal to 1 will be r this is actually radius is equal to 1 unit circle is this one so it will be in outside so here conclusion can be drawn as uh, 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 that <coughs> right hand side of s plane right hand side of s plane is equivalent to is equivalent to outside of the unit circle outside of the unit circle unit circle in z plane okay now exactly you are understanding the concept of uh, s plane and z plane the relation between s plane and z plane it is just as uh, that of uh, agar uh, if your in s plane it is in the left hand side 
poles in the left hand side so in the z plane also it will be in the inner side of unit circle if it is in the right hand side the poles will, uh, the value will be outside of the unit circle in the z plane so this is the uh, relation between uh, s plane and z plane so some final conclusion uh, i can tell you uh, conclusion i can tell you for z plane conclusion see first of all conclusion is what first of all conclusion is vertical lines of s plane is transferred to circular line in the z plane so in z plane there will be circular lines or circular strip you can say or you can say annular strip first of all in z plane uh, how will represent your roc with circular strip with circular strip will be okay uh, set of concentric circles there will be set of concentric circles concentric circles theek hai uh, with radius with radius 0 to infinite 0 to infinite when you see i will tell you how uh, whenever we will take see sigma is equal to sigma is equal to zero value if you will take uh, acha sigma is equal to zero value means uh, j omega x is taken and j omega x will be represented as sigma is equal to zero means r is equal to one definitely r is equal to one okay no problem with that uh, sigma is equal to infinite value sigma is equal to infinite so r is equal to e to the power sigma r is equal to e to the power sigma means is equal to infinite value okay and uh, sigma is equal to minus infinite value will be there then r is equal to zero value will come so these three conditions see, see uh, these three conditions i will tell you in the left hand side sigma is equal to zero means this line sigma is equal to infinite means sigma is equal to infinite means uh, somewhere in the right hand side and sigma is equal to minus infinite means in the left hand side same here if you will plot Uh, sigma is equal to zero means r is equal to one. So we'll plot uh, uh, radius of r is equal to one. Uh, r is equal to one. Okay. R is equal to infinite means r is equal to infinite somewhere. R is equal to infinite means somewhere. And r is equal to zero means this point. So uh, sigma is equal to minus infinite means left hand side will be in, inside inside inside. And the last portion is sigma is equal to minus infinite will lead to r is equal to zero line. Uh, r is equal to zero circle. and uh, sigma is equal to infinite will lead to r is equal to infinite circle like this it happens okay okay so by understanding this we'll see uh, we have seen some questions and now we'll plot roc also for for that question only let's suppose we have taken del of n okay del of n we uh, we have we were say, seen and we have taken z transform we got one value we got one value and uh, for mod z for mod z every value for every value or uh, r value c i'll show you the question we have seen delta of n value here uh, delta of n c delta of n uh, this value was coming one uh, uh, which is less than infinite so for every value of r for every value of r let's suppose that uh, r is r is less than 1 r is equal to 1 r is greater than 1 for every value of r this value will answer will come only one and it will be absolutely integrable so for every value of r uh, z transform can be calculated so we can show it by uh, c uh, we can write here for for every value of z, z mod z is for every value okay Uh, it will be uh, z transform can be calculated so it can be plotted by like this see first of all you will make a unit circle you will make a unit circle and we'll see see for inside also for uh, r is less than 1 also you you have uh, your for uh, that uh, z transform can be calculated for r is equal to 1 also it can be calculated and for r is greater than 1 also it can be calculated so we can uh, plot it like this and we can draw an imaginary line of r is equal to infinite value like this okay and we can plot it like this this is the uh, way to plot roc for this type of signal where uh, for every value of z or, or mod z uh, for uh, z transform can be calculated 
now again we'll see our next question our next question was u of n was there and its transform was 1 by 1 minus z inverse was there and for more uh, it uh, its z transform can be calculated only for when mod z is greater than 1 you know this for this only we have seen the earlier value so see its roc can be calculated like this its roc first of all we'll make a unit circle we'll make a unit circle uh, Uh, again and again, I am telling you this unit circle value is nothing but the j omega axis in the x s plane, है ना? So this is r is equal to one circle. Now see, mod z is greater than one or r is greater than one, both are same only. So uh, uh, whenever r is greater than one only, then only its z transform can be calculated. Means its region of convergence in the r is greater than one. Okay, so we'll make a imaginary axis, imaginary point of r equal to infinite, and we'll see that this value is okay. Uh, this value, this value, okay, this value is like this. Means for inner, it will not be applicable. For outside only, r is greater than one only, it will be applicable. So like this, we can plot. Okay, now next let's uh, we have seen my, u of minus n minus one will be value will be there. Okay, and here we have plotted z by one uh, z minus one will be there. Okay, okay, I think z uh, uh, it will be z one minus z. Okay, uh, so z by one minus z. Okay, and its mod z value will be less than one. Uh, we have seen earlier means r is less than one, so we can plot like this. Uh, unit circle is there. That is r is equal to one, and here we have uh, a region of convergence for r is less than one. So we'll plot like this. So now you must be understanding that um, how we are uh, representing region of convergence. Why we are representing region of convergence for this type of signal? So, uh, so that we can understand that in which values of r we can calculate its z transform. Okay, so uh, today in this lecture we'll close uh, by this much only. In the next lecture we'll see some properties like uh, uh, multiplication by exponential properties will be there, and uh, some questions also we'll solve. What are right-sided signal and uh, how will represent left-sided signal, and then we'll see uh, more over questions, more over properties of this initial value and final value theorem in the upcoming lectures. So for this lecture this much only. We'll see in the next lecture and. Uh, um uh, if you have liked this video then please do uh, hit the like button uh, share it with the needy students and uh, if you have not subscribed please subscribe it and uh, okay uh, tata bye bye see you have a good day jai hind